Number 12. Repeat the previous problem for the situation in which the rocket sled decelerates at a rate of 201 meters per second squared. In this problem, the forces are exerted by the seat and the restraining belts. All right. So um, if you're unfamiliar with problem number 11, check out our video prior. We did number 11. But basically, so uh, this box will represent the rocket ship. The rocket ship now is decelerating. Therefore, it has a negative uh, acceleration relative to the positive x-axis, that is. And uh, it will be slowing down. So think about this when you're in the car. What happens if you have a quick deceleration? You lurch forward, right? So the person is going to be traveling at a speed forward, okay? Now, obviously, well, unless the seatbelts break or whatever, you don't go flying through the windshield, okay? So we have to draw a seatbelt in here. Look at that. That's Now that's a safety feature. So that's going to protect this person from uh, going too far forward, right? So he, so this person is still accelerating or traveling at uh, in the forward direction here, but the seatbelt now is going to apply the force so that he doesn't. It's going to apply it backward on him, right? So the force here is going to be the same as the force since it's essentially part of the ship, right? It's going to be the same acceleration that the ship is experiencing, okay? It's pointing in the same di uh, direction. So now how can we calculate this arrow over here, this force arrow? Well, simple. Right, let's remember the sum of all the force in the x direction equal the mass of the object multiplied by the acceleration of that object in that dimension. So here we have the sum of all the forces, okay, is going to equal um, in the x direction because there's only one acceleration in that x direction, will equal the mass of the uh, individual, so 75.0, multiplied by that acceleration of negative 201, okay, meters per second squared. So the sum of all the forces in that x direction will be simply. So 75 times 201, we get uh, 15,000, I'll say 100, okay? 15,100 uh, newtons. Okay, great. And it's negative, right? That should make sense. We mentioned that it's pointing to the left. Makes intuitive sense. And the sign um, concurs. So now, that's great. That's the uh, horizontal acceleration. Now remember, they want to talk about, since we're repeating problem number uh, 11, they wanted to know the net force that the seat is acting uh, on this individual. Now the seat has a seat belt, so that's part of its net force. And remember, the seat is also holding the person up. So the person has a certain mass, uh, certain weight, right? And it's pulling down, but the seat, he doesn't fall through the seat, so the seat is pushing back up on him, okay? So how do we find that? Well, simple. Let's take a look at the weight formula. The weight of an object is equal to the mass multiplied by the gravitational value. So the weight is going to equal 75.0 kilograms multiplied by 9.80. So the weight of this individual is going to be 75 times 9.8. Now technically, the weight of that individual, right, will be, so 735, and that's newtons. The weight, in terms of a vector, is pointing down, so therefore it's negative. Okay, but remember, we're talking about it from the perspective of the seat, and the seat is actually pointing up. Right? It's providing an equal but opposite force because the person is not accelerating anywhere. So these now would be, so essentially now the sum of all the forces in the y direction, okay, for the seat's perspective should be a positive 735 newtons. Okay, now if I had to draw a quick free body diagram, all right, so let's draw my axes here and here. Okay, let's detail the forces. So we have uh, one force, in the negative x direction, so it's pointing this way, right? That has a value of uh, negative 15100, so 15,100 newtons. And then there is a positive force right in the positive y direction, so it's pointing up. Let me make that a little straighter, so it's pointing up. And that has a value of 735. By the way, this drawing isn't to scale. This line should have been much longer, all right? But now if we think about this, what is the total force? These are the two forces the seat is exerting on the person. Okay, so what would the total force be? Remember, whenever they're asking for total force here, they're really asking for the resultant force. Okay, so the resultant force, if I had to guess, right, if I had to draw it in this picture, it should be somewhere around here. It should lie closer to that uh, x-axis than it does to the y-axis because the x value, although I crossed it out partially, is significantly larger. Okay, so now... Uh, to calculate this resultant vector, simply take the sum of all the x values squared plus the sum of all the y values squared and then just square root them, okay? 
So the square root of negative 15100 squared plus 735, oops, 735 squared. Okay, so just take out the calculator, plug that bad boy on in. So we get 15100 squared plus 735 squared. And it comes out to a value of three significant figures we're going to do. So 15, well, it's so close, right, to the 151. All right, I'm going to go out a little more just so we can see the difference, all right? So 15118, let's call it. Even though that's not the right number of significant figures, it's fine. So uh, that is in terms of Newtons. Okay, that would be the total resultant uh, force that the seat belt experience, uh, that the seat belt imparts all right, onto this individual. Now we would also then have to calculate this theta. Okay, so how do we do that? Simple, use tangent, right? Tan of theta. If my angle is in reference to the x-axis, then I can simply do the y value over the x value and just take the square root. So we don't need negatives and positives in here. So the tangent of theta will be equal to the 735 all over the 15100. So we calculate it like this. Take 735 divided by 15100 and then do the inverse tangent of that. So second tan of 0 0.0487 we'll call it. So 7.89, right? Excuse me, 2.79. 2.79. 2 and that is degrees, okay? So that's the angle. That's That does make sense, right? Because this X value is tremendous, much, much larger than that Y value. I, I was even trying to show it in the picture that it's gonna be small. Obviously, that's not the scale. Now to finally give the, I guess, direction to the magnitude of that angle, I would then be calling it north of, north of west, right? So the final, final answer here for the resultant vector all right, should be 15118 newtons at 2.79 degrees north of west. The end. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this helped. Please remember to subscribe. And uh, I will see you. Well, I'll talk to you soon. I might not see you, but I'll talk to you. Take care.